which is going to happen with Sean Olmstead, the head coach of BYU men's volleyball. <laughs> back on the show. It's been way too long, man. Welcome back. Way too long. Yes, I agree. Couldn't say it any. Couldn't say it any better. <laughs> too. <long. laughs> Let's talk to somebody about that. Come on. Yeah. Who do we got to speak to. Yeah. You know who to talk to. It's not us. Uh, let's unveil the 2019 BYU men's volleyball schedule. But before we get into the very specifics, let's just. You've seen the rundown, and we'll get to all of the games. Just give us uh, an opening statement, if you will, on what you think about this year's rundown. Yeah, no, we're excited. We've been in the gym for a few months now, you know, since the start of school in different groups. And now we're together as a team getting after it. You know, we were going to be on the road actually competing with Pepperdine this weekend. Uh, but that, unfortunately, you know, thoughts and prayers to everybody out there. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, their school got shut down. And so essentially the, the non-season sports were just kind of dealt with and said hey you're you're shutting down completely mm. and so we were going to meet them up in vegas and have a nice uh, match a couple matches tomorrow and so that got that uh, taken off the table um marv dumphy's house was right in the middle of it all he stayed and fought the fire and wow he sent me a pretty cool video uh was everything from, okay yeah 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 marvin wow. and his neighbor kind of stayed back and and fought the fire so our thoughts are with all those guys but um so we've been in the gym we, we like this group you know of course we lost a handful of kind of veterans and, and faces that, you know, the fans and everybody's very familiar with over the last few years, guys like Price, Leo, Brendan, that have been kind of some constants on our team and our program. And so it's exciting for these new guys. We, you know, we had young guys last year step up and play, you know, Felipe and Gabby played uh, a really important role with our team last year and our success. So um, we've got uh, a nice mixture of those guys coming back an opportunity for them to stand out and, and take over some of the things uh, left behind from the other guys. Let's talk about this schedule, and let's uh, show it for the uh, viewers. You can also uh, get the full schedule on BYUcougars.com. You open with Ohio State and Provo. This is a fantastic match on January 10th, and then Ball State two nights later. How would you line up those two games, especially the Buckeyes and Provo? Yeah, that was something that Pete and I discussed a few years ago. Um, maybe, game. maybe after, right. yeah, yeah. Maybe after one of those losses to them in the, in the finals, I can't remember when we started to, <laughs> to, to <laughs> talk it up. It. No, no, it's, uh, <laughs> he wanted us to come out there and, and play and we opened up for them last year at their place. And, and won. so, yeah. And had a, a great match, a great five set match there. And then, uh, we traveled to Ball State. You know, we're able to drive there. So the travel for them is a little differently because they're going to be at Stanford and then they've got to have a day to fly. So we're going to open with Ohio State. I mean, that's exciting right there, right off the bat. Great program. And uh, so that'll be exciting for our guys. And Ball State, it's just nice to get teams that haven't been here for, for years and that both those coaches felt that same way. Hey, we really want to come to Provo. Let's work it out. And it's a great place to play. So we're going to go with that. The home-to-road balance is always an interesting topic for a coach when you're putting together a schedule. Um, again, six of the first eight on the road, then 11 of 12 at home. Uh, what do you like about that? What do you not like about that setup? Yeah, you know, you do have to find that balance, and, and sometimes it's not always, you know, perfect. I'd like to I, – I like that home stretch, but, you know – like you said, we've got to go on the road a bit at the start, and that's going to be – it's nice that it's kind of at the beginning of the semester and then in the thick of the academic calendar, you know, we're able to be here and, and be home in, in Provo, and then we've got to finish again kind of on the road. So uh, we like the home slate. You know, it's going to be nice to be here. Um, I don't know. Maybe it'd be nicer to be in California or warmer climate during that stretch at, at times, you know, through the winter. But – uh, we're happy with it, and we're excited about uh, all the matchups we've got. 12 conference matchups in the MPSF, 11 non-con. We mentioned Ohio State, Ball State, at Penn State, at Love St. It. Francis. Mm -hmm. uh, with all the nuns out there, that'll be great. Um, I'm just kidding. At Santa Barbara, where you're from. And then and then you start conference play at Pepperdine, at UCLA. That'll, mm -hmm. To open conference play, that will be a challenge in uh, yep. early February. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone... Every team on, on our schedule, you know, bringing Irvine here, that's a, a, a powerhouse in the, in the Big West now, uh, going to Santa Barbara, playing at Santa Barbara, I, you know, every one of those matchups. But, you know, kicking things off with Pepperdine and UCLA, that's – I like that. I, I'm excited about that because those, those are the staples in the, in the MPSF. Those are the matchups that for so many years have been so great. And so, uh, yeah, all of it, we're excited about it. 
Did Long Beach State want to play a game? Did you want to play? They're not on the schedule. Perhaps yeah. You meet them in the postseason. But. Yeah. You know, we've, we've me- mixed up a couple times a few years ago. Um, and so we just haven't been able to get back on the schedule. And they're hosting. And so, you know, the NCAA, the, uh, championship. NCAA championship. And so there's a handful of teams that were knocking on their door to get in there and, you know, get a chance to play in that arena, uh, you know, in preparation for ideally being there at the end uh, for the Final Four. On Valentine's Day, you open up a homestand, Concordia, USC, Grand Canyon, a couple of teams in there that uh, are still relative newcomers to Mm -hmm. uh, the conference. And and then you follow it up with Stanford before you go back out on the road at Stanford. Uh, When you when you want you always want to protect the home court. Um, Sometimes when you're always expected to win on the home floor, it's it's easy for fans to just expect the team to show up. Oh, they're going to win. It's going to be easy. How do you help your guys stay focused in on that when when you're expected to beat a lot of these teams? Yeah, but uh, you know that I can I can admit that that hasn't been the case. You know, we lost a match to Concordia here at home last year, and we you know we've had tough five set matches here at home. And and the thing that uh, I like about that is that ideally that's changing the mindset of the guys in terms of okay we can't just show up yeah. and you know because this place is full and you know there's a, a good vibe that we're just going to kind of walk through that match and uh you know Concordia look at the season they put together last year you know they they put together they were they were competing with every team in our conference knocked us off you know and 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 Sean's done a great job there it's got that program you know it's just uh they're rolling, and so we really can't go into any of these matches and just think that, okay, we're at home, we're at the Smithfield House, so, hey, the chips are going to fall as they always do fall. And so I kind of like that, that we've got to be a little more prepared that way. That's the New Mexico State game this weekend, by the way. The same idea. Yeah. Right? Right. With football? Yeah. Yes. And, yes. And <clears throat> Granted, Concordia is a lot better at volleyball than New Mexico State is at football. Right. But when we're, when will <laughs> Alderson Brodus be on the schedule? That's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> Get yeah, it? we'll figure that out. <laughs> Your sister Heather is coaching the number one team in the country. Yep. They're twenty six and zero. Love it. What do you think of what they've done? It's oh, incredible. It's awesome. Yeah. How exciting? How great is that? How how it's they're perfect. Yeah. Get, 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 yeah, get goosebumps. You know, they're just they're rolling, and it's so, it's a fun team to watch. And you know, I'm I'm a as much a fan as anybody else watching those guys compete an outstanding coaching staff, all of them together. And uh, they've just got a nice team right now. And so I'm really, really excited to see what they're going to do. How many of the current players on the women's team did you recruit at one point? Uh, most, uh, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble, but most of them uh, were recruits that, yeah, committed to our program when I was there with the women's team. And uh, so Mary Lake, Ronnie, McKenna Miller, and all those girls. So uh, I've got a great relationship with with that group of girls, and uh, a couple Heather and um, I mean even Kennedy committed to you know when I was there as the head coach. So a handful of them. So like I said, it's I'm in this journey. To get I'm yeah, them. like yeah. look at it. I'm so excited for them, and and they're gonna do great things. And it's just it's it's awesome. Like I said, Heather's doing a great job. She uh, she's got her blinders on in the right way. Got her team going the right way, and so right now. Uh, here we go. The fun part starts, you know, a couple weeks, Selection Sunday, and here we go. Yeah, I only ask that question, Sean, because I just want you to take more credit, man. No, 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 I, uh, no, no, look what, look what, what a great job they've done, and I'm so excited, and they're going to go, and just, it is fun for me to watch a few of those kids, because I remember, you know, you look at a story like Ronnie, I don't think, I know she's getting right. a lot of p- pub, but people don't know the story. Here's a kid that's going to go, you could say she's going to be the player of the year in the NCAA, and she's my pick right now, what she's done. Oh. And yeah, that's a kid that nobody recruited, you know, and we're sitting in, in my office, you know, and just there was so many of these cool things that stood out about her and her parents, and just you could see, you could see that in her, and look what she's done. Yeah, awesome. And she went to oh, a great high school. As I love well. it. <laughs> Upper Hills. <laughs> that Jeremy had to get. Am I signing our flag? Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Like, why are you know. handing me a sharpie? I was, like, was going to sign. Here, you know, I was going to sign your chest. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> well, we'll do that during the break. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll remove my shirt. Yeah. Yes, please sign the sailor coup. Yes, I don't want to fall off the back. Wherever you would here. like. Yeah. yeah, don't hurt yourself.